Let's begin. Welcome to the block. I am your host, Kyle Johnston. This is for the late night addicts, early morning coffee drinkers. It's where we talk some sports. We break down and handicap the games. Talk a little pop culture. And starting off with a little uh, Burning Brides, I provide some much needed music. We're going to try and make this a short podcast. I got some work to be done. So I'm going to fly through some sports picks, got a little ice hockey talk. That's right, I just called it ice hockey. Ice hockey. So, um, got a little hockey talk for you. Got some sports picks. A little basketball talk. Try to fly through this. So, uh, let's do this. So taking a look at the board tonight. We got a, we got a full slate tonight. We got a full slate. We got a few games in the NBA. We got a few games in the NCAA. There's a full board, full board in the NHL tonight. We got a Thursday night football game to watch. I don't know how good it's going to be, or how entertaining it's going to be. I guess that that rests on Jameis Winston's shoulders, basically. Because if anybody's watched the St. Louis Rams lately, I feel bad for you guys wasting four hours of your life. Because I've tried, man, and I've lasted, what, a quarter and a half of watching some St. Louis Rams football recently? Then again, I didn't have any uh, Rams players in some fantasy leagues that were coming down to playoffs. None of my opponents had any either, so I didn't really have to keep an eye on them. But anyways, looking at tonight's action, we'll start off, you know, like usual, we've, we've made a recent trend of getting to the college picks quick. You know, the college usually has a large board. So, like, 300 plus Division I college basketball teams. So, there's a, there's always a handful of games every night. Tonight's no exception. So, uh, 7 o'clock tip off. The West Virginia, the Mountaineers, they're hosting Marshall. The Thundering Herd have been god-awful this year. My god. Virginia's been putting up 85, 85 points a game. Defense pretty solid. Coach Huggins got the boys playing solid D, turned the ball over. 12 steals, averaging 12 steals a game. So, uh, let's take a look at this. So, uh, West Virginia, they're, uh, they're minus 20.5 point favorites. Minus 20.5 point favorites are the Mountaineers. The total in this game is 161.5. I'm looking for, uh, West Virginia's defense. They're going to step up. They're going to make Marshall turn the ball over. Marshall's going to struggle to score. I think Virginia's going to score no problem against Marshall. They're going to get out to a pretty big lead. Then it comes, you know, some garbage time. Play some play some bench, guys. Avoid your stars getting hurt. So with all that being said, I do like the under in this game. I like the under 161.5. West Virginia, they've, they, they've played a pretty loaded schedule schedule as of lately. Came out came out with a win in Richmond over the Spiders. Same can be said when they were in San Diego State. They had a tough loss in Virginia against the rivals. It's three big teams. Three pretty good uh three pretty good schools in the last five games. Same can't be said about Marshall. Sporting a 3-6 and six record. Playing the likes of North Carolina Central. Eastern Illinois. James Madison. So not a very not a very tough schedule at all. 
James Madison put up 107 points on these guys. Like, oh, God. Think about the children, James Madison. Think about the kids. Think about them. Marshall did hang in there, putting up 84, but... Oh, wow. But I, I like the defense to show up for West Virginia, so I'm going to take the under 161 and a half. Keep moving on. Stay with the NCAA board. I think this may be... I think this may be, may be one of my best bets of the night. I like this game a lot. Wisconsin-Milwaukee. They're hosting South Dakota. The Coyotes of South Dakota. <laughs> so, uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, they played a pretty, pretty good schedule, you know? They haven't played any cream puffs too much. They actually, uh, they actually came out with a 68-67 win in Wisconsin. I just want to say, well, I just mentioned the Badgers. I've watched a lot of college basketball. I'm a big Big Ten basketball fan. I'm a Michigan Wolverines supporter. But with all that being said, Coach Riley, congratulations on your career. You were fun to watch. You were exciting. You were one hell of a coach. We're going to miss you in the NCAA. We're going to miss you on the sidelines. I want to say uh, happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And uh, just thank you for all the memories. It's been fun. I've been watching college basketball pretty closely for like five years. And uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. I wish I could have saw you a little earlier. And uh, Coach Gaird, I think it's Gaird. Don't quote me on that right now. Sorry, buddy. Don't quote me. I don't have it up right now. I've been reading a lot of things, but uh, good luck to you. Good luck to you. But anyways, back back to the game. Wisconsin-Milwaukee, South Dakota State. So uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, they're laying eight and a half points. Total in this game is one fifty. And as I was saying, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, they played they played an all right schedule. Wisconsin, Central Mis Central Michigan, Duquesne. South Dakota, nah, signature win right now is over Minnesota, I guess you can say, but Minnesota, Minnesota's what, what the Golden Gophers are, they're weak, they're weak, every year they're pushovers, they're weak, weak mentally, they make stupid mistakes, over and over again, so that doesn't surprise me, South Dakota walking into Minnesota and coming away the win, but I like Wisconsin-Milwaukee in this uh, position, laying eight and a half points, South Dakota, they're giving up 76, 77 points a game. Milwaukee, they're giving up 70 points a game. So I'm looking for Milwaukee's defense once again to step up. We're looking for defense on the college hard court this, uh, tonight. So we're going to take the Panthers at minus 8.5. In the NBA tonight, a few good matchups tonight in the NBA. The local team, Toronto Raptors. They're taking on Charlotte in Carolina. But the one that I got my eye on right now is the Cleveland Cavaliers hosting the Oklahoma Thunder. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a one hell of a game. I'm going to have my eye on this game tonight. Cavaliers, they're laying two and a half points. The over-under in this game is two or four and a half. I like the under in this game. I actually got the under at 205. So we're starting to see some money coming in on the under. Oklahoma, they're 2-7 two, two and seven against the spread. Their last nine on the road against Cleveland. The under is cashed in eight of Oklahoma's last ten games and playing on the road in Cleveland. 
And right now, Cleveland's playing some good basketball. Their defense is stepping right up. LeBron James, Kevin Love. They're really, really, really stepping up right now on D. Delhi, the old Delhi guy. Remember Delhi in the playoffs? Yeah, not, not so much of an impact player. Not so much of an impact player. They still don't have Kyrie, Kyrie Irving. But Smith and Schumpert, Schumpert, sorry, you know, they got, uh, they got a lot of depth players right now playing good. And they're playing good D, playing very good D. Held Boston to 77 points. Held Orlando to 76 points. Thompson. Healthy Verjao. You know, they're pretty deep up front. You know, they're pretty deep up front. I think Mozgov's hurt right now. But, you know, their depth. You know, it's showing right now. So, uh, I, I look for a lot of defense in this game. Like I said, defense on the hard court is the trend today. Oklahoma. Speaking of defense, they've been playing some pretty good defense as well. They haven't let, allowed their opponent to go over 100 points in their last five games. Coming out with a W in all five. Kevin Durant's back. He's on fire. He's El Fuego right now. He's on fire. Pretty sure he posted his first triple double of the season not too long ago. But Cleveland is seven and two straight up in the last nine games, playing at home against Oklahoma. For our people looking at the point spread right now, Cleveland is three and seven against the spread in their last ten at home. Cleveland's also nine and fourteen against the spread on the season. Oklahoma, yeah, they're eleven and fourteen, respectable. They're eleven and fourteen and. Against the spread on the season. The under is cashed in six of Cleveland's last eight games. So like I said, I like the under 205 on the hard court. In the NBA. Now the Rockets, they're taking on the Lakers tonight. A little bit of late night action. And I can tell you what. The Rockets are on the list. Can't believe I went back to them against Sacramento. Like That, that, that was so such an amateur move by me. Fucking amateur. Never again, the Rockets. Screw you. Screw you, Houston. Screw you and your barbecue restaurants. You can keep them. You can have them. I don't want them. I ain't going near this game. We're starting to see some money coming in on the under. Wouldn't shock me. Well, like, the thing is, is if you're, if you're going to handicap this game, if you're going to wager on this game, is the potential for one of these teams to quit is huge. Huge. The potential for one of these teams to quit is massive. That's the problem with betting in the NBA. Is teams quit. So you gotta be smart. You gotta be on the right side. College? Meh. Not so much. Not so much. You still see it. You still see it, but not so much. But the players quit in the NBA. The game can be decided in the first 35 minutes. And I mean like 35 minutes in like real time. So that's probably what? First quarter. Game can be side in the first quarter. So that's the problem. You got to watch it. Oklahoma, Cleveland, that's going to be a good game. The Raptors and Hornets, not so sure on this game. You know, scared money never wins. I'm going to keep an eye on it. going to see what happens. You know, I'm liking the under. It's 195 and a half. But uh, that's what I'm leaning towards right now. But I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. The Raptors, they've lost two in a row. They need a bounce back game. Damari Carroll's hurt. Valanciunas is hurt. That's two of two out of the five starting uh, players in the starting lineup. Gone. So I'm not so sure about that. But I'm going to get over to the, uh, the frozen pond of the NHL. We got a full board. Couple... Couple, you know, I laid down a couple wagers, a couple and a couple games, you know, kind of caught my eye as well that I, you know, I'm just kind of waiting out. But right off the hop, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm being a sucker. I don't know if I should have sucker written across my forehead or whatever. 
I know Vegas doesn't like to hand out free money. That's why they're Las Vegas. But you got the San Jose Sharks in Toronto facing... I don't even know what to call them right now. They're basically in Toronto to play the Toronto Maple Leaf Marlies. Like, 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 the Maple Leafs watching them this year has been so awful. Like, the vibe around the Toronto Maple Leafs this year has been so weird. I got some pretty diehard Leaf fans that are some of my best friends. And the apathy towards the Leafs is just surprising. 28 years of my life, and I've never really seen this. So I'm 28. Probably started hating the Toronto Maple Leafs when I was like 12. So it's been a long time. 16 years of my life, basically, I've been uh, laughing at the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> oh, that Carolina victory that oh in the semi in the conference finals. That was a sweet one in overtime. Nicholas Wallin. <laughs> but anyways yeah so uh it's basically a pick em game right now sitting at minus 110 total for the San Jose Toronto Maple Leaf game is 5 pucks Gareth Sparks I do believe is in the net for the Toronto Maple Leafs the Leafs are just brutal they're brutal to watch they're a brutal team they are smart by keeping their kids in the Mar down in the AHL the Marlies they don't need to be coming up to this just yet. Bring them up a little bit later in the season. When there's not nearly as much pressure. Bring them up when the Super Bowl is getting kicking in. <clears throat> Bring them up when the NBA playoffs are, you know, getting close as well. March Madness. So then, you know, they got a lot of other things going on. Not as much eyes. Not as many eyes. <coughs> But San Jose Sharks, they don't have Logan Couture yet, but led by Joel Pavelski, you know, Joel Thornton's having an average year, and an average year for Joel Thornton's still pretty good. Patrick Marlowe, you know, he wants out, but he's still putting up, he's still performing. They got a young defenseman, they got a young defense group, sorry, that's stepping up, Edward, uh, led by uh, Edward Vlasic. So, like, how can you not? It's almost too good to be true, right? And sometimes when I say it's too good to be true, you can't. But it's the NHL. You got to go for it. If you're going to make a play in this game, you got to put it on the San Jose Sharks. So, San Jose, they are 1-6 straight up their last seven. But, you know, something's got to give. They're 5-0 straight up their last five games and playing on the road against Toronto. They are 8-3 straight up in their last 11 games on the road. So that, that, that bodes well for us. We like that. Toronto's 5-10 straight up in their last 15 at home. Like I said, 0-5 against San Jose in their last 5. The over seems to be hitting in this series as well when they play each other. Which is not, not too often. San Jose... Coming off a 3-1 victory in Montreal. They played a pretty good game. Even though they were outshot 27-18, they still played a pretty solid game, San Jose. Pretty solid road game. Montreal, you know, they had their chances, but nothing too, too dangerous. I remember watching that game. Charles coming off the old Stamkos game. 5-4 loss. That was obviously, obviously uh, Bernier's first game back. And Bernier was w exactly what Bernier's been. Shit. He's been awful. And that's no disrespect to Bernier. Just his confidence is so low right now. He just he, he needs a little bit of luck. He needs a little bit. Of, he needs a string of games. Because, uh, you know, you win in the, you win in the AHL. It's, it's a lot different than the NHL, you know, and I've never experienced, but come on. There's a reason it's the NHL and the reason it's the AHL. So, so you know what I mean? Like, even if, even if you start to build your confidence up a little bit, still, you know, you're, 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 you, you know you're, you're not playing well to begin with, so your confidence is low. Then you get the mode, so your confidence gets a little bit lower. So you got a long way to go, right? The only way to really get it back is to get it back in, in the pros where you, where you belong. 
And I'm a goaltender. Played triple A. I know all about confidence and stopping the puck, man. When you're confident, that puck is just so big. It's like the size of a watermelon. And it's moving so slow. And you can read the game. Well, you know, I, I was pretty, you know, I, was, I, I wasn't too bad. I'll leave it at that. I wasn't too bad. So, uh, had a lot of good times in my minor hockey career. Like I say, like the San Jose Sharks, minus 110. Nothing else is really standing out to me too much. So we'll continue to move on. The other play I made in the NHL tonight involves the Anaheim Ducks on the road in Buffalo. Anaheim are minus 140 road favorites over or under in this game is 5 pucks. I like the Anaheim Ducks sitting here at minus 140. They're starting to turn things around. I think they're going to be scrapping for a playoff spot come spring. Anaheim's won their last four games against Buffalo. All by multiple goal margins as well. And in the NHL, you see a lot of one goal games. So I look for Anaheim to continue that. Anaheim actually hasn't played a game since Friday. So it's almost been a week. So they should be uh, all rested up. They were on a long, uh, they were long, uh, on a long home stand as well. So they're on a long home stand, then they get a week off. They should be raring to go. I'd probably take the under in this game. They might be a little sleepy. As I said, the under in this game is five pucks, sitting at minus one twenty. So I'd lean to the under. That's what I'm liking. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. But I'm gonna parlay. Anaheim at minus 140 on the money line. I'm going to parlay them up with the Chicago Blackhawks. Blackhawks are sitting at minus 240, 245. They're playing the Edmonton Oilers. Total in this game is 5.5. Basically, look at the stats. The Blackhawks have owned the Oilers. Own them. Own them. So minus 245 for the Blackhawks. Minus 140 for the Ducks. Where you're getting like a plus 130, plus 140 parlay. Can't go wrong with that. The Blackhawks coming coming off a shutout. They're shut out in their last game. So you're going to look for the offense to get going. Patrick Kane and the boys are going to want to get going again. Taves. So Blackhawks, yeah, they're 8-1 in their last nine against Edmonton. Edmonton's numbers are just awful against Chicago. Don't even really need to go through them. They speak for themselves. Edmonton's have been playing a little bit better hockey, though. Four wins in their last five. Coming off a little mini road trip earlier in the week. But I look for Chicago to, uh, to use their dominance. They're healthy. Duncan Keith's back. Seabrook. Carmelson. They got a deep blue line. Obviously, you know who's up front. They got a couple of new guys that are stepping up and playing well. That pairing in. But uh, even the uh, for the for the boys back home, for the boys back home, even Brian Bickle. Brian Bickle's back in the starting lineup for the Chicago Blackhawks. So yeah, I, I look for them to use their dominance. Corey Crawford's going to have a solid game. Edmonton struggles to score goals. And they're giving up a hell of a lot of goals. So with that being said, I'll just run through my picks one last time real quick for you. Then I'll give you a couple games I'm kind of leaning towards. So in the NCAA... The West Virginia Mountaineers. They're at home against Marshall. West Virginia is minus 20.5 point favorites. The total is 161.5. And I'm on the under 161.5. And, 
the Wisconsin Milwaukee Panthers. They're at home against South Dakota. Wisconsin Milwaukee, they're laying eight and a half points. Totals 150. I'm on Wisconsin Milwaukee at eight and a half points. I look for them to uh, kind of route them a little bit, to be honest with you. In the NBA tonight, no, I'm not on any plays in the Raptor game. I'll tweet them out if I do. But the Oklahoma Thunder, they're on the road in Cleveland to face the Cleveland. Face the Cavaliers and LeBron James. Cavaliers are two and a half point favorites. The over under is 204 and a half. I'm on the under 205. We're starting to see some money coming in on the under. The Frozen Pond. I'm riding the San Jose Sharks on the road in Toronto to play that. To play the Leafs. Bunch of losers basically right now. Man, they're playing awful hockey. Awful hockey. Well, they're working harder, you know, but it's just, it's just. They're not very good. They're not good at all. They're not good at all. There's no, uh, for Leaf fans, there's, uh, there's no sun on the horizon. There's no light in the darkness. It's going to be dark for an awful long time. An awful long time. But, uh, and, and, and you know what? And, and, and I drink it up. I love every second of it. I don't even have to say anything to Leaf fans. I just got to look. I just watch. I just listen. I just see the sorrow. But anyways... So I'm on the San Jose Sharks at minus 110. My other play, I parlayed up the Anaheim Ducks. They're minus 140 favorites over the Buffalo Sabres. Total in that game is 5. So I parlayed the Ducks, minus 140 up. Parlayed them up with the uh, Chicago Blackhawks, minus 245. And they're playing the Edmonton Oilers. So just before I go here, Couple games, you know, the Habs. The Habs are at home against LA. <clears throat> Habs need a win. Habs need a win badly. And you know, Habs are sitting at minus one fifteen. Over under is five. Like to be honest with you, the Kings almost should be favored in this game, but you know, it's almost uh, it's almost making you want to bet the Habs right now. Sitting at minus one fifteen, they're in the Bell Center, but they're beat up the Habs. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're beat up, the Habs. I saw the uh, Road to the Winter Classic last night. Montreal, Boston. Pretty good. Pretty good. I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it. Because I'm not like that. I hate that when it happens to me. I hate when fucking people spoil shit for me in shows. I don't watch a lot of shows, too. That's the problem. Don't watch a lot of shows. And then when someone spoils, what am I... I'm just like... I'm like, Damn! Damn! Don't you know the rules? You gotta ask first, man. You gotta ask. Yo, have you seen this show? Yo, did you catch this episode? Then you'll get the answer. Then you know if you can elaborate on it, or you know if you have to shut your mouth. Not hard. So I won't, I won't, I won't spoil it. Maybe I'll talk about it in a couple episodes here when everybody's had the chance to see it. But it's pretty good. The part with Brendan Gallagher was pretty interesting. Seeing the uh, the stitches on his hands. Holy crap. I didn't think he'd get that many stitches. But I guess it broke like all the bones like around here or something like that. So he had like the stitches all around here. But uh, he'll be back soon. He'll be back soon. Will he be back for the uh, Winter Classic? I don't think so. Not by the looks of his hand. <laughs> Not by the looks of his hand. But uh, I, I'd have to take the LA Kings in this game. Sitting at minus 105. So I'm leaning towards the Kings. I haven't made that play yet either. But for people who are looking for my opinion on that, I'll try to throw a little bit of stats out here quick for you. But yeah, the Habs are beat up. <clears throat> Subban, he's a little banged up. Pacioretty, you know, he, he's slowing down from his hot start. David Dayarnay is starting to disappear. Which is to be expected. Markov. Markov's still playing alright. Still playing alright. But Petrie, I think he's getting beat up, banged up a little bit. Same with Emelin. Emelin's been laying some big hits. So that not only takes a toll on them, but it takes a toll on himself. So he, he, he's looking a little banged up right now. Boyo, he's starting to, you know, he, he's, he's going to have his ups and downs. He's going to have his ups and downs. But he'll have more ups. He'll have more ups. 
But the LA, LA is 1-6 straight up in their last 7 in Montreal. So the Bell Center's been kind. Kind to the Habs when playing the Kings. It's been a nightmare for the Kings, it looks like. Kings are 6-2 and two straight up in their last 8 games. So they're playing good hockey. Playing good hockey. That's the thing. you got to take a team that's hot, especially in this situation. So pick them. The Kings are a pretty damn good team. Arguably, someone could argue that they're better than the Habs. Lucic is back in the Bell Center, so that'd be good for the F Montreal fans. I'll be watching this game. Fuck, I hate Milan Lucic. I have a lot of respect for him, but fuck, I can't stand him. Can't stand him. Glad he's not in Boston anymore. Fucking love it. How, how, how you like it not having Lucic, Boston? How you like it? How you like it? I'm, I, I'm loving it. And we don't have to fucking sacrifice ourselves against this fucking man beast anymore. He is a man beast. You can be stupid sometimes, though. That's the that's the that's the good thing. Is that we're we're a pretty smart team, Montreal. Emilian Lucic, as good as he is sometimes, as many qualities as he brings, he can be stupid sometimes. And we exploited that stupidness sometimes. You know, I'm not saying he's dumb overall in life. Just on the ice, he makes some dumb decisions. But who hasn't? Who hasn't? But uh, yeah, we exploited that a lot in the past. But um, he's back in town. Bell Center will be rocking. There'll be a lot of booze. Booze will be raining down. Should be uh, some good electricity in there. I'm looking forward for the uh, first confrontation between him and Emelin. You know that's going to happen. You know that'll be a lot of the talk heading into it. Lucic and Emelin. So uh, for all you uh, hockey fans, I'd say that's probably the game to watch tonight. It's going to be a good game. I got one more day left of school. Then I'm on holidays for three weeks. And I'm looking forward to those holidays. I'm looking forward to those holidays. We got a lot of bowl games coming up. The bowls start December 19th. It's got what San Jose and oh, I should I should be remembering this. It's a six and six team and a five and seven team. Nothing really to go crazy about. Try to avoid some of those. You don't know what happens in these bowl games, too. But, uh, you know, us suckers, us degens, us degenerates, you know, we'll probably get sucked in regardless. I didn't even talk about the Thursday nighter. Totally forgot about that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll leave you on that note. I'll leave you on that quick note. Because I haven't even broke the Thursday nighter down. But it'd be an alright game, right game if the Bucks won last week because it would have been, uh, been meaningful. Would have been meaningful. Rams played pretty good last week. And, uh, you know, like, it's it, it, <coughs> it's hard to take the road team on these Thursday nighters. But I think this game's going under 41. The Rams are minus one point favorites. The total's 41. Without looking at a whole lot of stats. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, Detroit, the Lions suck. You know what? Most of the times when a team... Well, the Bucks do have something to play for. They're sitting at 6-7. and seven. You know, like, Minnesota and Seattle are probably going to get in it. But Winston Winston wants that Rookie of the Year. So I, I, I'd take the Bucks. I'd take the Bucks to bounce back after a loss to New Orleans. And beat the Rams in a really crappy football game. And I'll probably end up watching that football game before I head out. I said we got a pretty good night down at the pub. And remember, if you're not laying the money down on the table, you're not winning.
Strikes to 